question. He comes into the room, he will ex they will explain to him what they want to look like. If there's any changes they want to make, or if they have a picture of somebody else who's smiling. Well, smile somebody said that, that you yes. had the person actually bring a picture in of every year of her life so that you could give her a, a smile mm -hmm. that was progressive with who she was. And I will, do you think that skin color, do you think that tones of teeth, I mean, a person's skin color, face shape changes how their teeth should look? Sure, it does. And it, but everybody's different, too, on their perception of what they want. You know, what I give you may be different than what I give somebody else. And that's what they will communicate with us and the lab man. He'll, he will actually be right there, and the patient will explain all that to us. Do you, do you just, you, why do you have the on-site lab? Do you think it's that big a benefit to the patient? It's a huge benefit to the patient. We, we can, like you mentioned before, we don't have to send things back to a laboratory and get it back two weeks later with the hope that maybe it's done correctly this time. Is part of it that your patients, and I, and I mean, I, the majority of patients I've met today have been high anxiety, high stress, don't like to go to the dental office, although most of them now don't want to come back and visit you, but do you think the fact that you can fix it in one visit versus having to send it out and having to come back two or three times. Do you think that helps with their anxiety level? Do you think it makes them more tremendously, comfortable? Tremendously, tremendously, because we don't have to send it back. When we get it in there, we can fix it and make it the way we want it to be. That's incredible. I'm going to talk to you a little about sedation or IV dentistry. Any time that I would walk into a dentist's office, I would really cringe, um, hyperventilate, um, press fire. When I first walked in, I was feeling all of that. When I walked into it, got into the chair, I told him, you cannot go in my mouth at all. You cannot. At that point, he built up the relationship where he said, I don't have to go in your mouth right now. So that was pretty good because he didn't push himself on me. For the last two years, having extremely bad headaches, um, allergies, hay fever, um, going to the hospital, Every other weekend I was going to the hospital. Since I've came to Dr. Gonzalez, I've maybe had one or two headaches, very rare, not even migraines. She did have an infection in her sinus and that could have been contributing to the headache, so we cleared that up. But I think the more important thing was we used some neuromuscular techniques on her where we relaxed her jaw muscles and found the correct position for her jaws. In other words, her muscles are in a more relaxed position now and that ends that whole cycle of uh, muscle tension headaches. I would say less than 1% of dentists are trained to do neuromuscular techniques. Most dentists don't even know about it. Uh, but it is very important when you're doing reconstruction work uh, because you can rebuild that bite to the same position. She would still have her headaches today had I done that. All right, earlier today we were talking to Michelle. She said her headaches went away, other pains went away, all of this stuff happened because she had her bite rebuilt. Now you said it's neuromuscular dentistry. What is that really and how important is that to the outcome of the case? It's, it's very important to the outcome of the case. And the problem is that most dentists don't take the time to learn about this or even know how to treat this. Uh, what we do is we align the jaws where the muscles are the most relaxed position. And then we rebuild the bite around that. And then that allows the muscles to be in a more relaxed position and that gets rid of her headaches. Okay, and she didn't say that she came in here to even talk to you about her headaches. That just, they happened to go away. That's correct. And you said it was because you practiced neuromuscular dentistry. Do you find that people have headaches all the time that they don't realize are related to their bites? Maybe they get their mouth, the uh, reconstruction done and then they get headaches? Is that, is that a, a common problem? We hear this all the time. Patients come into us and they do have headaches and, and a lot of times it's because they've had piecemeal dentistry, you might say they've had like a bridge placed here, a bridge placed there, and what's been done then is they're perpetuating their problem rather than correcting the problem. So if you're going to have everything done, you need to do it in a more correct fashion so that everything is done so the patient will be at their optimum position. How important do you think neuromuscular dentistry or practicing it is to having the proper outcome in the case? Is it, is it really that important? It's extremely important, yes. Is that something that you would maybe want to find out about a doctor before you let oh, them? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Are there a lot? I mean, you said earlier there were very few that do. There's it. very few dentists that know about neuromuscular techniques to, to reestablish the bite. And if you're going to have like extensive reconstruction done, you should have somebody who's trained in neuromuscular techniques to rebuild your bite. Okay, let's go meet your next patient. I had not been to the dentist in a long time. I mean, it was by far the worst fear I've ever had in my life. I mean, I had nightmares about it. And my wife was constantly asking me to go to the dentist. Uh, walking in Dr. Gonzalez's office for the first time was 
as I, as I mentioned, it, it was probably, in my mind, the bravest thing I've ever done. I was so scared I couldn't sit down. They didn't do any work. They just talked to me. They didn't even look at my teeth at first. All they did was talk and just make me feel comfortable sitting in a chair because this was something I could never do in the past. Made a detail of what each tooth needed to have done to it, and, um, and I looked at the list and it was like a lot of stuff had to be done, and I knew that. And um, then he, then I said, well, that's going to take several visits. And uh, he said, no, it's, well, I'll, we'll do it all next Thursday. <laughs> and I walked in here with by far the worst teeth of my family and walked out of here with the best teeth of my family and uh, with absolutely no pain. I, he even gave me a prescription for some pain pills that I don't think I even took because it really, yeah, it was a little sore, but it, I really didn't have any pain. I could tell before he even looked in my mouth that I wasn't going to be embarrassed by what he, you know, because I, I, I don't know, his just his demeanor was just uh, one that was like, okay, let's take a look, you know, let's see what we have to work with here, and and it's, it's very, as I said, very soft spoken and very. Um, uh, I just all of a sudden I was immediately comfortable with them. They treat you incredibly, and uh, I haven't had any bad experiences here. I mean, every every member of the staff. Um, Dr. Gonzalez, everybody has been incredible. What is the difference between a pain-free dentist, a sedation dentist, and IV sedation dentistry? Well, to start with the pain-free dentist, that just means he uses local anesthetic. And so if I read in the phone book pain-free, that doesn't really mean anything? No, it doesn't mean anything. Okay. I mean, most dentists are, quote, pain-free dentists, meaning they're using local anesthetics. Uh, you mentioned a sedation dentist. Sedation, a lot of times... The pill. I heard yeah, the little blue pill. Oh, I had the little blue pill. That, that usually means a little blue pill. And, and that is a form of sedation, but it's not very deep. And it, what it does is take people to a relaxed state. It makes you feel like you've had a few beers. And some people have no memory with that, depending on what drug they're giving them. Okay. Uh, we use IV sedation, which is a totally different category. We put them completely asleep. So they're out just like they would be for a surgery. Well, they're out like a surgery, but their reflexes are still intact, their heart is beating on their on its own, and, and they're responsive, but they are completely asleep. So they, you're, you know, because I met people today that were in the chair for a, a considerable amount of time. I met one lady, she was supposed to have 10 or 12 visits, and you did it all in one sitting. That's correct. She said she woke up, she went home, she slept for four hours, she got up, no pain, no swelling, you know, it, and knowing what she had done, I would expect, I call them mouthfuls of crickets. You know, they talk in their mouth and they're right. for, for months. Does IV sedation dentistry allow you to do, I don't want to say better, but more complete? Or does it allow you to offer things to patients that you couldn't do under the little blue pill or, or relaxation dentistry or whatever else we were talking oh, de about? Definitely. We, we well, to start off with, we give them other drugs too while they're sedated. Uh, we give them something to put them to sleep. It makes them relax, but we also put in a pain medication. We use something called fentanyl, which is similar to morphine, but it's like 80 times stronger. So they have no pain. They have no pain. Now, when they t so she said she woke up, went home, slept for four hours, woke up, no pain, no swelling, felt great, and her teeth were all done. Right. Here's a woman that hadn't been to the dentist in 20 years, was told she needed 10 or 12 visits. I would have, was supposed to have her gums laid open, and you fixed her gums with the laser, I guess. Right. I would assume, and maybe I don't know, that that person would be in tremendous pain, or my experience would be have a lot of pain and a lot of swelling. Is it because their body's relaxed? Is it the drugs you put in? You know, is it you? What is it? That, see, because everybody, if it had been one person I talked to, and obviously I talked to a lot of people today too that we didn't get to, to, to show their interviews, they all said the same thing. They had these huge things done. They had these massive, their mouth completely rebuilt, and none of them had swelling or pain. The only thing they all had in common was they all had IV sedation dentistry. That's right. Is that a common occurrence? Do people wake up and not have that pain and, and, and swelling that they normally expect to have afterwards? It's very common for, for several reasons. One, we use cutting edge techniques. Our, our, our techniques are less invasive. 